Guys, it's Jernigan here. We're going to be playing some more World BBC News. The BBC News. Has overtaken Italy in its total number of confirmed. Said Spain has taken over Italy. Meaning it is now fighting the second biggest outbreak in the world. The latest figures show Spain now has nearly 118,000 infections. The death toll in Spain is still behind Italy, though. 932 people have died in Spain in the past 24 hours. That is slightly fewer than yesterday. It brings the total number of deaths there to almost 11,000 lives. Italy's death toll has reached almost 14,000, while in France, more than 5,000 people have died. The United States has the world's highest number of cases, with nearly a quarter of a million confirmed infections. Just under half of the country's deaths have been in New York. All this comes as the number of people around the world infected with COVID-19 passes 1 million. That's according to a tally being recorded by Johns Hopkins University in the US. And let's just show you what those figures look like. This graph shows infections from the start of March. China way ahead, but there you can see Italy. Watch it closely, leaping to second place by the middle of March. Spain overtakes Iran to go third. That's the rate of infections in the US, which sees a dramatic increase by the end of the month. We will take you to Washington to hear from our correspondent shortly. First, though, more on the situation in Europe. Spain's health ministry saying the rates at which new people are being infected is continuing to stabilise. The increase in the number of cases today is 7% compared to yesterday, which confirms this trend that we've been seeing these days of a reduction of the rate of increase. And the same conclusion is derived when we study hospitalised cases and cases admitted to intensive care units. Let's take you to our Europe correspondent, Gavin Lee, who joins us now from Brussels. So it's a bit of a mixed picture in Spain there, Gavin, with the rate of uh, reduction in infections decreasing, it seems. Yeah, I mean, it's an alarming figure, isn't it? It's the second highest figure released for any country in a single day. The death toll, 932 people in the last 24 hours confirmed as, as a fatality of coronavirus. and. Optimism, we just heard from Maria Jose Sierra, who is the country's emergency health director, who's the stand-in director because the previous emergency health director has coronavirus and they're still recovering in isolation. That there's a 7% drop, it's a 7% increase rate of spread, so 7,000 cases uh, in the last 24 hours. Um, go back a week or so, there was a 19% spread, so a significant over the past week, but just to put into context, you said a second ago, Spain overtaking Italy for the first time, 117,000 total cases in Spain, 115,000 in Italy. We are going to get those figures for Italy later tonight. It's always around five o'clock in the evening. So that means that we expect Italy will go back above Spain. But in terms of the comparison here, I think go if you compare the last seven days, Spain has had 67,000 new cases in a week. Italy has had around 30,000 in that time, so Spain has doubled the rate. And just as well, we've heard from the Ministry of Health, we've also heard from the Guardia Civil, the civil guard in Spain, to say that they've given out more than 5,200 fines in the past few days for people still not sticking to the strict confinement measures. Things like walking fake pets, they've said, to try to justify reasons for being out and about, pets that didn't exist, going to friends' houses for something to eat, and refusing to comply with the, with the police as well. Gavin, while we talk about the data and look at graphs, it's always interesting every day to compare them. But the human suffering at the moment across Europe is just incredible. And we have to think as well about those healthcare workers in Spain and in Italy. How are they coping particularly in Spain with these kind of numbers? Well, if you look at the, the, the numbers of, of deaths, first of all, and the, the biggest figure of um, fatalities in Spain for the, for the death toll, 10,935 people killed. Um, of that death toll, more than half are in the Madrid greater region. And that's a big worry for the authorities there. We're seeing a similar picture actually in Paris uh, and in and around Madrid, the Lombardy region in Italy, those big cities where plans are in place to start taking people to the, the rural areas, the, the communities that can cope a little better. But of course, there's a, there's a knock-on ripple effect of that, the risk of spread. Um, just to quickly mention the, the French scenario, for example, is Easter weekend, the Easter holiday that starts this weekend. The police are all over roads, bridges, motorways out of Paris, Lyon, Lille, the main cities, because they want people to stay home. They have given out more than 360,000 fines in the past two weeks. There is one country that's gone a step further, the Dutch. The Netherlands government have 
put uh, well, the authorities there four people in prison for what's called corona coughing, basically deliberately coughing and spitting at the authorities or people in the street claiming they've got coronavirus, prison sentences for four people. Gavin, thanks for joining us with that, uh, all the news there from across Europe. Well, Gavin mentioned the picture in France and mentioned that those uh, police in France are stepping up their spot checks, particularly around Paris. So many people like to leave Paris for the traditional Easter holidays that start today. But Paris has been badly hit by coronavirus and what the police are trying to do is stop the spread to other parts of the country. Here's Hugh Schofield in France. If you're a French family and you're hoping to take off for the Easter break, maybe to visit grandparents down here in the provinces, then the message from the French government is quite clear. Think again. There's no school, of course, at the moment, but technically today is the start in the Paris region of the Easter holidays. And normally the motorways would right now be crammed with vehicles heading for the countryside or the seaside, packed trains too. But the chief of police in Paris has deployed 8,000 officers to check on people leaving the city, and he's promised a policy of zero tolerance. We'll be there at the start of your journey, he said, we'll be there during your journey, and we'll be there at your destination. It's a tough message, prompted by the knowledge that after nearly three weeks, the policy of confinement is having psychological effects on people, particularly on Parisians living in their small Paris apartments. And the bad news is it's not going to end anytime soon. Officially, the confinement, the lockdown, ends on April the 15th. But with infection rates showing no signs of slowing down, everybody knows that the period could be longer, maybe much longer. Please go your beer in France. Well, that was a very interesting news channel program. Lots of people have probably seen it, or people probably haven't, or not had time to. Not at least I've put it onto YouTube for me and other people to see if they've not seen it. Anyway, <clears throat> and voice is going, I think, that we're in, I'm still well. <clears throat> anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, give it a like, give it a comment, and share it with your friends, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for joining us, guys. Peace.